It's Cash Color Camp is a high level of conversation on live hip hop daily TV. And this episode is sponsored by Atlantibus Clothing. Our drug lord, Atlantibus, and Return to Vipers line are all available for purchase right now. So shop Atlantibus, AtlantibusClothing.com today. And pardon me, I, I left my glasses. And I guess now I am getting nearsighted. I could barely see anymore. Um, <laughs> so I got my guest in the building, man. We finally, was, this, we about to crank off the last episode, the last live episode of the year. This has been a long year, man. Like for, uh, for it to be a pandemic, we sure kept working you know what I'm saying whether it was live stream or whatever we was using we still kept the show rolling man so um we about to roll out our last episode of the year man and I'm blessed to have our guest in the building bro I've been trying to say it correctly all day I do not want to butcher your name please introduce yourself my name is Nkosi Felix CEO and founder of Emerald Triangle Packaging Nkosi appreciate you brother man um you reached out to us a little while ago you was a vendor for our cash color Christmas party which was amazing man appreciate you coming through it was a dope vibe all the way around and um I wanted to have you on the show prior to that but it's, it, you know how, how things kind of fall in line you was able to we, we we was able to get you on tonight and I think it's a perfect time man we could kind of vibe out about the brand and kind of get it into more about yourself and your background in the in the plant so um First things first, man, let's get started, man. For those who don't know, um, just tell us what you do and tell us a little bit about Emerald Triangle, well, about your brand. All right, well, what I do is I do packaging. I okay. do anything that's got to do with transporting weed, securing weed, or storing weed. And also, I sell ancillary products for smoking. So that's your general papers, grinders, lighters, ashtrays, uh, and who I, who I am is I'm in Kosi. I've been in Atlanta most of my life, and I've just taken those experiences and look, looked at the market and figured out what it was needing and brought to the brought, brought it to the, to fruition. All right, that's what's up, man. So um, before we get into Emerald and we get to, to the full discussion about the containers and everything else, um, speak to us about how you, you what your relationship was with the plant. Um, when was the first time that you discovered cannabis? The first time I discovered cannabis, I can't really put a date on it. I've been a roster all my life, so it's always been something that I had to forge a relationship with because it was, it was everywhere. So my some of my earliest re recollections just include me and my parents in the room, me and my, my brothers around, and, and smoking. Yeah. So... Um, I personally started to uh, st started to enjoy cannabis when I, when I was about 17, 16, 17. That's what's up, man. So you had a different experience than most people because I couldn't think about smoking with my parents or nothing like that. Like that, would, as a matter of fact, to this moment, I can't even think about talking about weed with my mom is, at some point. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, that's that, that's tough. Yeah, that's yeah. tough, and it's and, and it, it was really acclimating to, to, to and it really, really was jarring to like some of my friends and, and stuff like that. But I think that I came up with the, a different relationship with it so i think that's that's what helped forge me not going crazy with it nothing like that and you was probably smoking better weed than most of us because I, I was you know i was talking a little while ago about some of my preferences of even rolling up like i i came up with the vanilla duchess and the strawberry duchess like right, that's my right. favorite shit. and i was like man i was smoking some of the best reggie in the raps dog like, right <laughs> and they don't even make them like that no more no nah, no nah, they don't even make them like that no more man but i'm sure you smoking a better grade of weed than we were at that moment yeah more likely <laughs> more likely <laughs> That's what's up. So your parents were influential in the use. Um, were they influential in any in the launch of Emerald? Like, did they push you in the, into this lane? In nah, way? nah. Um, my um, Emerald Tri Triangle was started because of my own personal need to secure my weed. So I had been going f across the country, back and forth, and just recognizing that every time I went back, whether it was three months or three weeks, the marijuana situation over there had had evolved and when i was looking at it in atlanta i really i recognized that all right if, if i put up some weed and then i go and i come back it's not going to be the same quality so what can i do to satisfy that need so emerald triangle was started because i had to store my weed somewhere yeah and you found a good place to store your weed um emerald is very heavy it's kind of a sturdy product as well um what type of material is this ceramic Oh no, that's glass. That's glass. It's, it's all UV glass. It's not carbonate. It's not. Uh, it's, it's just fire. It's just fire blown glass, and uh, the t the lids as well are glass. And that's what I had to bring to the market. I I, I know that there's other p products, but the products that are similar either aren't 100% glass 
or they are not 100 percent opaque yeah. so uh that's uh that's that, that's what these jars have that's specific. you know and, mo and most people lean more towards the glass like the thing that threw me off was how black it was you know what i mean like most people are used to the glass jars and mason type joints that we that we've always come up using but this is glass as well yeah i, I thought it was ceramic the way i was touching it no that's that's glass that's glass if, if you drop if you drop it from a certain amount of feet it will shatter just like glass just but like what it won't do is it won't splinter it's, it's like shadow resistant so it's not um it, it will break it is glass but it, it, it'll mm -hmm. try not to splinter on you yeah we've definitely seen containers and packaging evolve a lot of, a lot over the years like it went from you know we have in uh what was it like the, the the little glad bags that we that we bag up in to people stash them in pill bottles so now it's all it's, it's a completely more way more sophisticated situation going on here um how's it feel to watch the, the watch the even the, the process of containers kind of um, evolve over the time and how we even stash our weed i think it's i think it's a product of a necessity because from from the day from the days in brooklyn people had them in blue bags from the days in in, in the islands people had them in corn husks yeah. so you 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 have you have what's <coughs> near so now in the area of worldwide global commerce we really can get what is uh, we can, we really have access to to, to whatever. So uh, to to satisfy our need to hold our weed in uh, and also be portable, that's what the mylar bags have have started to become a, a big proliferation of them. Just because they are easy to brand and they're easy to port and they are easy to mass produce. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why uh, mylar bags are start, start, starting to take over. Yeah. You know, um, look, 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 looking around, there are other companies, there are other brands similar to what you do, but they each one kind of different, different one way or another. They might be smaller. They might be something that's a little bit more slick and compact. Like you, I've seen the lipstick containers. I've seen, um, you know, saying things like that. What separates um, Emerald Triangle from what you say your competition? I could say premium, okay, minimalistic, secure, one hundred percent UV. Th these things are all aren't objective they are all the fact they have two they have two different sizes and that's also what di would differentiate me from a, a lot of my competitors they may only have one size or, and they, if they do ha have two sizes they don't have a half pound size mm -hmm. so that's uh that's what's different different me in the market that's a lot of weed too and it sounds like you it's, it's it's definitely something for consumers like myself but it sounds like you you're, you're leaning more towards dispensaries overall like this should be something that you partner with dispensaries with yes uh i'm interested in getting this product in dispensaries because i think once dispensaries once once the average consumer goes to the dispensary and starts recognizing that the more premium of the weeds are held not only on the top shelf, but they are held in the t in the top shelf on, in black jars. Then they'll start to wonder what these black jars are, and when they start to want uh, mm. start to um, get them themselves. Yeah. So um, even when I do specify for dispensaries to to have them, I I, I let them know the only top shelf can go in there, mm -hmm. and um, that that that's just really what, what I'm trying to come at with it right now. Have you spoke to any like they, they, aside from um you know I'm thinking of my, my off the top of my head there's Peak there's um um Blunts and more out um have you spoke to any black owned dispensaries about part, possibly partnering or, or introducing the brand inside of any of their any of their stores No I have not partnered with with any black owned dispensary just because I had to shore up my myself in every a avenue before uh, Facts, being be, like being that Emerald Triangle is still relatively young start being have had started in 2020 i needed to have, make sure that my website my branding my supply chain and my, my customer service levels was secure enough to the point that i could support a business as large as these dispensaries are comfortably without dropping a level of service yeah so I will be reaching out to them in 2021. I think you hit on a good point that most people don't think about when they think when they're starting a business, like say like like an ancillary business such as this, that it goes more than just being able to go on Amazon and buying in bulk and then putting your label on there. There's 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 actually plan, planning out your business, expecting to see growth, things like that. Speak to us about from a business perspective, um, just putting together the business overall of, of of Emerald and going from say just making it something niche and cool that people would want to buy. To looking at it like man this could really be a business we could scale up well uh 
from the beginning, I, f- I, I looked at it like all of the top companies right now are all tech companies. What can I do to bring that same level of innovation to the cannabis industry? So I noticed um, secondary to that, that all of these tech companies had big secure brandings. You see Uber, you know exactly what they are. So mm-hmm. I said, all right, okay, I need a, a great branding plan. And I also said that the things that's going to differentiate me from being a small business is not looking like a small business. So if I launch, and once I launch, I slowly scale my business to the point where I have just as much options as the the bigger people, then the only thing that would stop somebody from shopping with me is if my prices were extravagantly wrong. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, that's just what uh, that's just the way I, I came at. It. I said, well, how can I use technology to appeal to to the senses? Like, how can I use technology to expand? Oh man, you know, branding is is is, <clears throat> is something that's 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 definitely um, it's not only just needed. I was about to say, but it's, it's not needed, but it's one of those things people are, are definitely hunkering down on, especially during the pandemic. Most people are trying to either refine their businesses or just start their businesses and making sure they have something that's brandable was very important to them. Um, how many have people started reaching out to you already about possibly doing custom joints or anything like that as uh, far as working with yeah, you? Yeah, um, people like once I once I came to the last event and once I started putting on my on my Facebook and my Instagram, people started reaching out to me and started was just starting being receptive and being real uh just 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 being real inquisitive about about what they could get because a lot of times people especially black businesses like they are but they are perturbed away from getting packaging because any if the, if they had went to any uh, anybody else that does packaging their minimum they require a minimum of 10,000 pieces 10,000 pieces to run is just the business I mean, it's just the general number on the business. So the fact that I, I'm also specializing in small run packaging, I'll do a run of as small as 500. That makes it a that makes the I mean, a whole lot accessible to the average businessman. Yeah. So um, just letting people know that uh, small runs are, are possible is is what's letting people like reach out to me a lot more. All right. When we, speaking about branding, um, if you ever go to a pop up, um, whether where, wherever you at, where you listen to this show, if, if you ever gone to a pop up, if you ever go to a, even if you just shop with a regular weed person nowadays, you'll notice branding even there. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody now has not only their own bags that signify who they are. It's almost like they created they created their own names. You know what I'm saying? Right, Everything right, is kind of kind of kind of new. And the mylar bags really help that out. You know, um, speak about one of the positives of Mylar, like why people would, why people even use those before we speak about um, some of the negative connotations that come with them nowadays. Okay, so the reason why people use Mylars a lot is because they are portable, they're lightweight, they're inexpensive, and they can be multi-purpose. You can put a 3-5 bag, you can use the same 3-5 bag to hold flour, and you can also use it to hold a brownie. So um, I think that's what, what, and also because if you're going to get Mylar bags, you have to buy 10,000 of them a lot of times. So now you like got to find uses for them. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why. That's what's up, man. But then there's always, a ne- then there's a negative, you know what I mean? Like, like right now people, again, when it comes to the branding, it's real simple for you to go on, say, an Amazon or go on eBay and literally p- purchase a pack of shit that says <laughs> somebody else's brand. As you know, people in the streets will just drop that in. Like, you'll see a yeah. fake Shark Lotto. You'll see a fake Runts. You'll see, like you said, money bag Runts. You'll see people recreate those fairly easy and then throw them in the bags. Right. And now people have this 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 um distaste for Mylar bags. Like, they assume anything that's in this is, is, is boo. No, that is, that is a thing, but I do think that th- they're not only gonna categorize the the weed that they got in that bag as booth. They're also gonna categorize the person that they got it from as yeah. booth. So the people that are interested in uh, knowing that they have to secure their name are only gonna put the best out there, and they're only gonna say uh, they're only gonna say what is in the bag if it, it actually is in the bag. So these type of people are the people that's actually buying the packaging. That's that's as, as as actually is what it is. Now, in addition to that, the packaging that is out there that's that's proliferating is is not very very modern. It's is is looks overtly like a 
like very cartoonish. Um, as, as, as a lot of metallics. It's a lot of red, blues, and greens, like a Power Ranger. Um, <laughs> it's, it's it's not it's not very sophisticated. So I'm trying to bring the auth- auth- authenticity to it, and also m- make all my designs minimalist and conventional uh, to, to the 21st century and also know that the brands that are working with me are working with me not on, not not because of my scale and not because of just who my, who I am but they also know that the integrity that I only make bags that are for people who are ordering them yeah, yeah you know and, and it's a great marketing tool I feel like you know what I mean like I've, I've really watched some people if you you again if you have your product correct like look at um somebody like Chief Green you know what I'm saying like you go you go to a pop-up and you go to Chief Green's joint it's like he ha- he knows what he's doing you know what I'm saying he gets good quality but yeah there, there's there's always going to be a, a a band of people who can, who can know how to uh, fuck up a good time you know yeah, yeah. but uh, I think I think just continue to, to innovate in the in the in the, in the, in the space because yeah. I think that What's what's next is coming is the eco friendly mylar bags. So the the bags that are so the ma- bags made from, are they recyclable now? The ones we're seeing now. Yep, they are recyclable. They, okay. they they like hemp on the outside, and on the inside they're like that biodegradable plastic that's made from like you know them straws. Yeah. So yeah, that's like, what's up. So um, I think that's the next front. So I think that the people that are faking are continue faking, mm-hmm. but I don't think the people that are faking are going to in, invest into the biodegradable bags yeah actually well and you spoke about something too i feel like there's a lot of just overall in cannabis there's a lot of um um, juvenile marketing you know what i mean like like you say the red blues and greens the power ranger colors like taking names from other brands and just you know what i'm saying It's, it's, it's kind of a laziness that you are seeing i commend you on trying to trying to um raise the bar on that you know what i mean speak about some of the marketing things that you see overall in cannabis like do you agree like some of the stuff you see is 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 definitely lacking a lot of um uh, sophistication well I, I think some of the marketing around cannabis is, is yet to mature and i think a lot of the imagery says that i think the there's a large market of marijuana that is yet to be tapped into being that i've never seen an ad that markets to women and i don't see any that market the flower or the tincture or whatever they're selling, I don't see that in them that market what they, what they what they're marketing in a way that's accessible for you to know what it is if you hadn't known what an indica, a sativa, or a hybrid was. Yeah. So I'm looking to not only bring the bring the brand to a more mature level to to where somebody who is new to cannabis or has been using it for a long time but but can look at it like a just, just, just like a respectable thing that they're about to consume, as as opposed to something that you do behind the the locker room in in high school. Yeah, you know, um, we're watching now a lot of um, a lot of um, um, hip hop trans- transition over into cannabis. You know, most recently. Um, Jay Jay Z's line monogram hit. You know, shout to um, pa- matter of fact, shout to Posh, Posh Green um, out in San Francisco. I know that they were one of the few first people who had a chance to roll it out. She rolled it out today. Um, how do you feel about seeing some of these MCs come into the game and looking at how they're packaging? Because I'm actually impre- I was really impressed by how monogram. That's Jay Z's brand. Okay, monogram's marketing and their branding, amazing. I think that amazing. I think that w- one thing I can say is about the artist that's artist that's rapping right now. Uh, Every, every artist that's out right now has got to be a master at social media, plus they have to be good at making music. Mm-hmm. So in order to do that, they got to be keen on trends. They got to be keen on what works and what doesn't. And these people oftentimes farm out their consultation for packaging to somebody else. So they'll say, all right. Let, let me go to somebody that does packaging as opposed to me doing packaging myself because I'm doing shows, I'm doing my, my Instagram lives, I'm selling my whatever. So these rappers are going to, to trusted people in the space and they're making them packaging. And I, I think this is a good thing because, yeah, they're getting their name out. But at the same time, I think what's going to bring it a little bit more is more people like me coming out to say, hey, I can offer you the same thing that those big brands may offer, but I have a more tailored response to what you may need because I'm not putting it up, putting you in a cookie cookie cutter cookie cutter category and say all right you need nice packaging that says that you do x no I'm I'm really going to try to learn the intimacies of your brand and what makes you different and what and what makes you have to stand out that's what's up man you know um 
Dad just lost. But I was going back to monogram. Monograms is is I really like that shit. How he rolled that out. I don't know if I don't know if the price point fits with the what the bud is. I ain't smoked it. But if I was just a novice, I'm buying that just off the rip of how good it looked. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you said it best. You buying it because how how good it looks. Like people buy records and don't have forty five players at home, so <laughs> it's the same concept. Yeah. You, um, how are you right now? Market? Well, that was the question I was going to go to. Um, you started the brand basically this year, and this year has been a, a hell of a year to start something. You know, through, through a pandemic. Um, what's it been like starting the brand and maintaining the brand in a time where? Going to going to shows, going to trade shows, going to conferences have kind of all been nixed out. You've had to figure out new models and new different ways to kind of market and even sell. Like, speak to us about working through the pandemic as far as launching a new brand. Well, I think working through, through, through the pandemic has been good because starting from from, from day one, Emerald Triangle was supposed to is a technology focused cannabis fund company. So I started by figuring out, all right, what can I what can I automate? So from stress um, from Search terms that people were, 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 were entering that was that, that let me know that people were looking for more weed just for being at home yeah. from <laughs> from Back. people reaching out to other places like, hey, um, I'm trying to come out with some weed. I noticed all these rappers that are coming out weed, with weed. I'm, I'm noticing Obama runs becoming things. So I, I think that starting the business throughout the, the pandemic was good because I just figured out what all I can. I, I just spent time. For, just automating as much thing as I could. So that just freed up more and more time for me to then be coming to meet people like you because I figured if I spend the six months, first six months just building the business, then maybe the pandemic will slow down some. And and that's kind of what happened. Like from March to now, I just really just been conceptualizing, trademarking, um, reaching out, um, all the, uh, yeah. So I think throughout starting, throughout the pandemic was good because it, it, I was I was able to really hunker down and really kind of just focus. But I, yeah, yeah, I wasn't able to come out and really meet people like that. But be, being so fledgling, I wasn't, I, I, I wouldn't say I was ready. Yeah. Um, you're one of the few black owned businesses that make packaging like this that I have discovered. If I'm incorrect, go ahead and drop a comment. Like I say, well, I was telling you earlier today, I did a Google search today. I'm looking around. And I could, the closest I could find was one, and they didn't necessarily do everything that y'all did. They really just did one jar. Um, speak to us about being kind of like I said, the the, two, the ink spot on the on the white piece of paper in this in this lane alone in cannabis. You know, what I'm saying we often know that you know there's not a lot of black faces in any kind of in in positions of power business wise in this space. But when you start looking breaking it down from category to category, and you look into marketing, branding, containers, like stuff like this, now nah, we really don't have any. So speak to us about you know saying carving that lane and and knowing that much about yourself. Let me know about that about yourself. Knowing that going into it that you're going to be one of the few faces that you even see in this space well i always felt like i was the first doing a lot of things so i didn't feel like i could take take that and be daunted by it but i didn't know that i was going to have a blueprint to success and i do think that i did have to like hunker down and kind of figure out what what people what, what type of people were doing good in this space and i really wasn't seeing anybody that looked like me mm -hmm. I, I really i really wasn't so i i just said i if I can advertise that I'm the best business and I happen to be black, then I think I'm leaving a lot of stuff on the back burner. Nah, I need to come out and say, nah, I'm proudly black and I do this, 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 this. Yeah. Watch me. Yeah. So I think that's really what, what kind of like put me on my, like put me on my pedestal where I'm at now too. Work. Let's get into the, let's get into Emerald the brand overall. So we know we got the jars, we got the Mylar packages. Um, is there anything else you offer as far as services? I feel like when I was on your website, you speak about um, doing marketing and branding for different for different companies. Well, um, I Emerald Triangle is proud to say that it is is building other businesses. I'm currently working with some with some other brands to get them on my level, being being the, the, the being that. My level is just a, le a level that is marketable worldwide. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of locally known cannabis businesses that don't even have websites or Instagrams or um, or businesses like business licenses or stuff like that. So I think that's what I'm what I'm what I'm bringing to the table because once you do that, it's a lot of money out here in this cannabis um, cannabis way. And once you're a legit business, that's when you that's when you can open yourself up to the funding that's out here, to these grants that's out here, to these to these avenues to the point where you can do this thing that we all know to be illegal in Georgia, but put a 
a, a face to a name with it and come out and say, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm doing something that's different. And it's, it goes hand in hand with that and just go 100 with it. Just go 100 with it. Yeah. And speaking of Atlanta, you know what I mean? Like, Atlanta is really, for a place that, for, for, for to be a city in a state where it's nowhere close to legal. You know what I mean? We, we, we're seeing so much innovation come out of Atlanta, whether you talk about from the media side or whether you talk about what you're doing here. Um, speak to us about, you know, being down here in Atlanta and being able to see Atlanta turn into a place that is definitely going to eventually be. I mean, we're turning the state blue in, in a, on a political side, so we're definitely catching a lot of light there. We're going to start catching a lot of light from the cannabis industry as well. Um, speak to us about working out of this space and just kind of seeing that innovation and kind of seeing this scene grow. Well, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing just from being in the clubs in Atlanta at 16 and being able to smoke in them and going to other other places, Texas, Atlanta, you can't do that. No, you I'm, can't. I'm in, I'm in Texas, New York. <laughs> no, you, you can't do that. Not. So I'm like, bro, like, so just the attitude with weed here is different. So... I think that's what makes uh makes Atlanta thrive. It's it's different. You go, it's grandmas on every block that be hitting it, and I, re- <laughs> and, I, and, I re- and I really th- I really think it's it's cities that's that's you know real facts that's real uh, closed minded to it. But Atlanta is not one of those cities, so I mm-hmm. think that's what's what's helped to thrive. And the people that that might, that might smoke and be from Mobile come to Atlanta and live in Atlanta because the, the the green's so good here. People that might that might be from Durham move from there to here just because the weed do so good here so i think that's and then these people have kids and then it just it just multiplies so i think that i think atlanta is great just because the attitude from one is good is great and then a lot of people have money out here to the point where having money or not having money isn't isn't even material it's people like the flex and people know that we cost money and one way to flex with it is to have a lot of it or smoke a lot of it so i just think that comes with bro it. i see it i've seen it so much over the last three months doing these pop-ups let me tell you something don't tell me y'all broke <laughs> you, you cannot tell me y'all broke y'all out here buying a hundred dollar ace y'all got somebody got some money somebody <laughs> saved some bread man um you know <laughs> let's get into your weed taste bro we haven't talked about that like do you have a, a, a particular strain or anything that really like 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 moves you when it comes to weed like is there a favor for you Jet fuel. Jet fuel. Jet fuel. Um, I, I, like, I like the jet fuel. I like that rocket fuel. I, I think they're, they're they're two different things, but they both taste like you like you like you just sucked on a pipe of a 1966 Volkswagen. And it's really <laughs> like it shouldn't even be like that, but it's just yeah. it's so potent like that. So I think those are two those two of my favorites. But I also like the ice cream cake. I like the wedding pie. Um, yeah, I, I I think the runs the the runs is is, is, in, is in rotation at all times. Yeah, and that's another thing with, with, with why I had to keep the jars is because, okay, weed expensive. I'm buying expensive weed, but then I'm buying one, two, three, four different packs. And I can't keep them all in the same place. And No, 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 no. I no. don't also like mixing. So um, my, my, my indicator got me my indica, my sativa got me my sativa, my hybrid got me my, with my you know, so that's also what, what came up. Yeah, but, but my types I like, I just like, I like something strong. I like, I like, I like something that, that, it's real, real, real pungent. Like if it smell like you shouldn't be smoking it because it smell like some throw up or something, I probably want want to smoke that. Like that, that's the weed I want. <laughs> he said, I want that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, dude, so when it comes to um, consumption, are you a blunt roller? Are you a leaf roller? You 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 a, you a bong? Well, um, I'll tell you straight. Like from starting smoking weed at 16, 17, I I I, I was from Dutchies, White Owls, and um. All that, all that um, good stuff, backwards, all that stuff. But really, in the, within the past three years, I really started to get back in on my workout vibe, and I recognized that I well, I didn't have my wind like that. So I just felt like, all right, okay, I just stop smoking or eat edibles or something. And I just was like, no, nah, that ain't happening. So I just converted to papers, but I still felt like with papers, I, that was like not getting me what I needed. So I went to Raws, and from Raws, I've been able to maintain my athletic fitness and s- smoke as much, if not more, than, than ever. Raws hit, man. I like Raws. I started getting the papers my fellows. Matter of fact, blatant um, um, shout out to Pure. You know what I'm saying? I started trying them out as well. I'm moving more into papers, but there was a time when I was a hardcore blunt person, man. Like, I, I even did a poll on my Instagram not too long ago about what was your favorite back-in-the-day blunt. 
I used to be a hardcore, <laughs> hardcore strawberry, <laughs> vanilla Dutch. Shout out to Jada Kiss. At one point, at one point, if Jada Kiss said it, I was gonna go find it. You know what I mean? And Jada was real cool, was 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 moving in the line real quick. A strawberry, a vanilla this, you doing a grape Dutch. I tracked down, I had, I remember being in Charlotte. I tracked down the vanilla Dutchess. Like I went from store to store to store to store after hearing them say that. Like I gotta find this, I gotta find yeah. this, man. Was he oh throwing back in the day, like what was your favorite go-to? Vanilla Dutch, like Vanilla Dutch, and then shit, when they came out with the games, I remember the day they came out with the games, they were like, look, they got these Rillos that's supposed to be like the Dutch Palmas, but they cheaper though. Um, Say less. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and then the dude behind the counter counter was like, bro, try these, bro. He's like, you gonna like these, you gonna like these. So yeah, I remember I remember the day they came out with games, and I remember, because I was like 17, I couldn't even, I couldn't even buy blunts, but I went to this store because I, um they were selling them to me, whatever. So, um, but yeah, so I could say games was my go-to for probably a decade. Swishes was my least favorite. Like I know um, I'm a, I'm gonna insult a bunch of people in Texas right now. I'm sorry about that. But smoking swishes was almost like smoking papers to me. Like you might as well just smoke papers. They 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 go so fast and, and I don't know, man. I like tasting weed too. And, and, and right now that's why again I'm going back to I'm going to papers. You taste the bud so much better. And when you smoke is um, swishes and shit, it's like ugh, man. I'm tasting too much tobacco, too much paper, like. It's just it, it over it overrides the taste of the weed to me. Yeah, um, having having had been there, done that. Once you once you go to like places where they like got weed at, got weed at, like Jamaica, you can't get no damn swisher. Damn <laughs> up uh, uh, up North California, you can't get no swisher. Like they like they don't even sell them up there. So that's what that's what kind of how I look at it. Like you know, you can't you ain't tasting no weed with no swisher. Yeah. So um, looking looking into 2021, you know we 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 about to crack open a new year in a couple of weeks. Um, what are some of the plans you got for 2021? Now that you 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 got your le- you got your you got your legs, you know what the brand is, you know how to you know what the audience is. You feel what's the plans next for 2021? All right, um, going to a different pop up every month. Uh, I'm, I've got a script. I'm calling dispensaries, calling newly fi- founded CBD businesses letting them know that they can get their packaging from me and also coming to people that have an interest in cannabis and letting them know that, hey, you know, you might've been thinking about starting a weed business, but now is the time yeah. and maybe make it an e-commerce business so you can really scale it. Cause I'm getting orders countrywide just from being here. So I think that like, that's also what I'm gonna be doing, but I'm really gonna make a big, 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 big step into marketing like i have i've got to do a a a good job of getting my name out there and just making emerald triangle synonymous with good weed i think you know just throw some throw a throw a freebie there you talk about marketing you need to start getting some of these um not even just artists some of the brands you're gonna bump into pop-ups start getting them to start making custom needs and start selling them on 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 yeah man like i think that's a that's a whole nother lane right there okay yeah and that's definitely the thing like look these got my logo on them but it's like for you to put your logo on them. Yeah. For you to put your, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, you got the ideas, you know what I'm saying? You got the ideas. I'm here to just make, bring your ideas to life and to help you source that, that product. Yeah. So, um, you know, I want you to speak about one last thing about the ancillary side of the business. You know, um, we often speak out here about how, you know, people love to get into the weed side. They, they, they feel like they need to be having dispensaries. But the thing that probably is going to make you the most money is what's going to set you what's going to set you up legacy wise currently, right. which is being able to do something outside of touching the plant. Um, I feel like you got a good model right here as far as with, with Emerald Triangle. Um, speak to us about the importance of the ancillary side of the business and why you feel like more people, more, 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 you should see more black people, more people of color looking into the ancillary side before they start looking at, you know, trying to get a license and trying to get you a dispensary. Well, um, I wouldn't be able to advise which, which, which avenue they, they, they should take or why, but yeah. I could say that the packaging is a consumable. The packaging is a consumable and it's also never sold in quantities of one. I sell, I may sell a jar in a quality of one, but I'm not selling a Mylar bag or a set of papers or a, a, a grinder in one. So gotcha. it's, it's, it's like it's more multiples and it's a big larger market for, for that. Like it's a larger market for like you, you may sell weed, but I may not even like what your weed talking about. But I just got, it, I, I'm gonna put it in a pre-roll and it got to go in the tube. It's got to go in something. So I think that being able to be universal and offer literally every 
business that's got to do with either weed or CBD offer something to them, I think that's what's setting me apart and what, what I think that that will make me profitable and will, what will make people who may turn their eye to it and say, why I do the, the packaging? Well, it's because you can market to everybody who's doing cannabis, whether or not they even smoke or like your weed or want to spend money with you. Yeah. I found out you was a hoop fan when we got here, man. Um, talk to us about the, you know, the league just started up. We got the games playing right behind us. Talk to me about, you know, I found you, you a Hawks fan? Yeah. Um, big Hawk, big Hawk. Uh, <laughs> if we, if we going to talk about the league, we got to talk about how they decided to not test for cannabis this year. Oh, salute that. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, salute so that. that. So that's a big thing. I mean, like they probably figured, can, um, all, all 500 our players were doing that thing for eight months. So why are we just going to make them stop for what, you know? Yeah. So. I think that is something that's also going to hold true for next year and the year after that and the year after that. And it, it's a highlight to say the, so, the NBA is often the, the trailblazer in sports. So first NBA not testing for weed, then the NFL. Next thing, baseball. Next thing, it, maybe Olympics or something, you know? So I, I feel like that's just what was going to ripple through the league. Yeah, you're right, man. The, the, the NBA did decide that this season. I feel like it's going to be one of the moves that moves over as well. It's not something that you can really duck. And you can't tell me that they weren't allowed it. I mean, they had to allow it during the bubble. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, I can't go nowhere. Bro, I can't. Look, you want me to play four games? Yeah. You want me to play mm -mm. five games mm -mm. in four days? Mm -mm. Bro, I, I, need to, I need some dope, bro. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. Mm -mm. J.R. Like, Smith was the first one petitioning for that. <laughs> like, man. Like that. <laughs> man, I feel like. All, I feel like they, um, them trainers, like them trainers, be be, be really be uh, advocating, cause they, cause they know their players, like they, they, they know that they, a lot of times don't even get back to the to the hotel one o'clock in the morning, and that's, plus they gotta go at practice and all that other stuff. Nah, bro. Then, then don't let you have played your knees sore and stuff. Yeah, you need something. Look, and you're talking recovery time as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we, 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 yeah. I commend, I commend the NBA on that. Shout out to them. Shout out to them for the with their new campus policy. Definitely. I feel like they're going to have a great seat, a great year this year. I think the Lakers might win this. And I hate saying that as a Boston Celtics fan, but I feel like the Lakers got this again. Like, we talking about legacy shit right here. Man, I feel like Lakers going to be cold until LeBron get in the league. And then I think LeBron probably just going to, like, he might take a seat then. Take a seat back then. Bro, I feel like he got at least another two in him, man. I hate to say that again. As a Boston Celtics fan, I don't see how this man, like, Watching him last year at the age he was, he's in, play that level, and know that you still probably got another three, four years of that in you, and you got young Anthony Davis with you right now, and more people gonna come. I don't know, man. I think I think this boy just he he really put himself up there now, where you gotta really argue him and Jordan. Like he got he gave himself a better argument. You got another two rings out of this. You got a real argument now. True story. True story. Yeah, man. So, um, before we get out of here, man, I want you to let us know how we can oh, how we can find out more about the brand. If somebody was like interested in seeing, say, possibly getting their own custom version of this, or they wanted to get they wanted to speak to you about maybe, um, you know, saying doing their own version, how could they get in touch with you? All right. Well, uh, if you if you if you needed to get anything in bulk or in singulars too, I got that. Um, you'd be able to get at me at Emerald Triangle, PKG .com, all one word. Uh, Instagram, Emerald Triangle, PKG, and just I've also got a, uh, I've also just got got to put it out there that if you reach out to me, I'm I'm gonna do my best to let let your brand's vision come to life. Word, bro, I appreciate you, man. It's been dope since I met you. You definitely are inspiring, brother. Cause um, yeah, right right now we need more of us on other sides of this fence, mm -hmm. and this right here is a good start. Yeah, I'm look. I'm gonna try and go build businesses. So anybody who who got something that's that doing what we like, like just, just, just let me know so we can, so I can let let you know that the the little avenue that you could take to, like, to open yourself to some of this fun that's out here. I'm about to start a consulting business. <laughs> he said, "Look, nigga. <laughs> look." Look, I appreciate you coming through, Bo, man. Thank you for being our last live episode of the year. It was definitely dope. Inspiration, I mean, inf informational one. Um, yeah, and that's, that's, that's that, man. I appreciate everybody tuning in this year. We're going to have some dope episodes for y'all coming out soon. But in the meantime, stream this one and stream every other one that we have up, up right now on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, wherever you stream podcasts, wherever you stream music. Um, it's Cash Color Campus, a high level of conversation.